Saludos mis queridos amigos de Facebook, ¿cómo están hoy? ¿Cómo están todos? Yo soy David, ustedes me conocen como el playero, vivo acá en Connecticut y vengo a compartir un poquito con ustedes, no sé si me quedé aquí mucho tiempo hoy, estoy en el bellísimo Candlewood Lake, uh, aquí en Danbury, donde yo vivo en Connecticut. Estamos en la época de octubre. Hello Paul, how you doing? Praise God, how you doing? Todos esos que están entrando, Dios los bendiga. God bless you all, everyone that comes in to see the, uh, the feed. God bless you all. And uh, just here to share just, you know, a little bit uh, where I live and, you know, this beautiful lake. I don't live, uh, I live about 10 minutes away from here. Hello to everyone coming into the live feed. God bless you. The Lord causes his face to shine upon all of you. And uh, my name is David. I am not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an expert of the Bible. But I do like to share the good news. And I like to share beautiful sceneries like this. Beautiful here. Absolutely gorgeous. They should take a little peek. Absolutely gorgeous. Now the trees are changing colors. It's very windy out here today. I hope you can hear me okay. The trees are changing colors. And it's uh, autumn time here. You could wear a light jacket. October is un poquito. October is a little bit confusing because you come out of your house. I had a sweater on and everything and I had to take it off because it's You think it's cold, but it's hot. <laughs> okay. Hello to everyone coming in right now. Hello to all of you. God bless you. Praise God. Father, I thank you for my friends on Facebook. La última vez que yo me presenté, or the last time I came here, I'm, I got talking English because I got English speaking friends. The last time I came in here, I spoke to you about Jesus Christ and the kingdom and all that stuff. You guys seen it. And uh, I, lo I love to share Jesus with the world because that's what the world needs. <laughs> the world needs Jesus, man. Oh my God, I don't need no more. I don't need. I don't need no more politics. I don't need no more bad news, toxic news. Thing. No, 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 no. I need Jesus. Give me some good news, Dave. Give me some good news. Praise God. How uh, welcome to all of you coming in. Everybody's. Their, your letters are coming in sideways, so I don't know if my video is is right or I'm gonna have to straighten it out. Let me see. Let me just try this here. Let me try this. this let me try this here. Yeah, 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 there it is. Nope, that's the part. Nope, nope. <laughs> I hope it comes out good. I don't know. I just, I hope it comes out. It doesn't come out crooked. Otherwise, I'll have to straighten it out. I'm going to share out of Daniel 7 today. It's a very confusing book for a lot of people. A lot of people on YouTube are, are uh, experts in prophecy. And I was browsing through it last night, checking it out, you know. And I asked, like always, I asked the Creator, the one who sustains all things by the word of His power, To reveal something to me about it. I mean, I read it before many times, but I, I really didn't fully understand it. I still don't. I still don't fully understand the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And, uh, but little by little, it's being revealed not just to me, but to the whole world. The whole world is going to know what Daniel 7 is talking about. Not just me, not just this little prophet in a mountain somewhere hiding in a cave. The whole world is going to know. <laughs> in fact, this generation knows what Daniel means. And uh, welcome to all of you. God bless you all. Praise God. Thank you for coming for a little bit. The video probably won't be that long because I'm out here. It's windy and it's, you know, I have, I'm on a battery here, you know, so who knows, right? Let me go quick to Daniel 7, real quick. Because I... Uh, It is a little bit of a lengthy chapter. Where's Daniel? Is that in the New Testament, Dave? I don't know. Look it up. 
Where's the book of Daniel? Well, what, what's that all about, Dave? Tell me about Daniel. Who is he? Daniel was a uh, was a prophet who served the kings of Babylon, the greatest kings that ever lived. God called him to serve. What? Yeah. God called Daniel to serve. He didn't call Daniel to become a great... Daniel didn't know he was a great prophet that would foretell the future, our present day. Daniel didn't have a clue. He didn't know what was going on. He knew that God was talking to him, but he didn't know what God was talking about. The book, the book was sealed up for many centuries. We didn't know what Daniel was talking about. Daniel didn't even know. But he knew that he heard from God. Now, it's very windy here, and I can't even turn the pages right. I'm having a hard time finding Daniel. Could someone please help me? See, I'm very clumsy with the, with this book. I'm not an expert, like I said. I'm still looking in the New Testament for Daniel 7. You know what I'm saying? All right, here we are. Daniel 7. Praise God. Glory to his name. God sustains all things by the word of his power. That's how he revealed himself to me. I sustain all things by the word of my power. God sustains everything with the word. The word sustains every living thing. The things you see, the things you don't see, the little creeping things, bugs, everything under the ocean, over the ocean, over the stars, in the stars, everywhere. God sustains all things by the word of his power. Praise God. That's a revelation right there, baby. That's a revelation right there. That's something to chew on for the rest of your life. All right. Daniel chapter 7, real quick, because it's very windy. And it goes with the book. My situation here in Kendallwood Lake in Danbury goes with this book. Why? Because it begins with a storm. It begins with wind. Four winds from four directions over the water, over the ocean, over the great ocean. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, this was his first year in office, Belshazzar, the greatest kingdom that ever in human history is the kingdom of Babylon, believe it or not. Daniel had a dream. What? Daniel dreamt he had a dream. Did he have a bad night? Did he have pizza? No, he had a dream. He had a dream from God. God gives you dreams. God has the ability to communicate with you when you're sleeping. He's not Santa Claus. And you'll know it's God talking to you. When God gives you a dream, he's giving me dreams, not all the time. You know, I, he doesn't give me dreams. Every dream is from God. No, very seldom. They're very rare. Dreams from God are very rare and depends on what position he has you on. If you are an influence in worldly thing, in the things of the world, God will give you dreams. If you're a king, God will give you dreams. Someone like Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin. God will give those men dreams to communicate with them, to warn them. And I had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed when he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now, whenever God gives me a dream, I write it down while it's still fresh in my head and I write it down objectively. I never write, well, I think it's this. No, 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 no. That's what Daniel did. Da Daniel wrote everything down or he had scribes. He had scribes write everything down objectively, what he saw. What he saw is what he reports and this is what I do as a modern day man of God, a prophet of God, I report to you what I see objectively, not what I think it is, not my opinion, not my religion. I tell you what I see. And what I see here is a great big storm in the first verses of Daniel 7. A great big storm with four winds blowing from four directions. Can you imagine over the ocean? That's a huge, hello everyone coming in right now, praise God. A huge storm, windy, very windy. Father, I ask you to 
calm down the wind a little bit so I can talk with my friends here on Facebook. Praise God. Please, Lord, please calm down this wind. It's very windy here, very noisy. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. Strove up. Imagine this is the great ocean. I think it's the Mediterranean or wherever there is over there in the Middle East. That's the only sea he knew about was, you know, the, the Red Sea or the Black Sea, whatever. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Four winds over the water, a great big storm. Daniel speaks, I saw the five vision in the night. Behold, four winds, heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts, animals, four animals came out of that ocean. In the dream, he saw four great beasts, okay? And came at, and they were diverse, they were different one from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. Now, I'm going to explain what has been revealed to me about this, okay? The first beast, which is a lion, this is human history, okay? The sea is humanity. I'm just gonna make it short because it's, you know, I don't wanna be here all day. The sea is humanity, human history. Human history, okay? The sea is us. You live, what, 40 years in those days, people lived maybe 30, 40 years and they died, you know. Human histories, kingdoms went up and down, but there were four main kingdoms that influence you and me today. Four great influences in human history. Now the ocean, the great sea, is us. We are the sea. We are the sea. The four winds is trouble trouble lots of trouble wars and rumors of wars and you guys seen it in history you learned it in school the first beast he describes as a lion now the Babylonians their logo was a lion with wings okay the Babylonian is like I said before is the greatest king that ever the king the greatest kingdom that ever existed in human history is the Babylonian kingdom you can look it up in the library it's right there it is the head of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar saw years before this. This is a repetition of that statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in the middle of the desert. The head of gold is Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar himself. An ancient day Trump. He was like Trump in the ancient day. <laughs> he was. He was a talk. He talked a lot. Talked too much. Too much tweeter. The first was a lion come out of the sea. And he had wings thereof that were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and may stand upon the feet like a man, the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw, and a heart was put into it. That I don't really understand. The man's heart was put into that statue. Hey, wait a minute. Modern day we have, well, I don't want to go there. And behold, another beast, a second like a bear. Now is the bear Russia? Someone please answer. Is that bear Russia? No. The lion is not England. The bear, you see, go on YouTube. You listen to this, guys. You'll laugh. You, it'll, it'll, it, you just want to have a laugh? Listen to these pro, these so-called so prophecy experts. The lion, is that England? No. Is that the United? No. The lion is not England. The lion, the lion is, uh, gosh, I forgot who the lion was. The lion is Babylon. And the second beast is a bear that came out of the ocean, out of the, out of the human history, the bear. Now the bear is Iran, modern day Iran, Persia, Persia. And he had ribs in his mouth, that bear was chomping on flesh, had ribs in his mouth, those were four kingdoms that he was chomping on, and it was divided, Persia was divided, Medes and the Persians, the blah, 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 all right? Modern day Iran is the bear. And behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear, raised up itself on the side, and it had three ribs in the mouth, three kingdoms, three ribs. These, and then they thus arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, a leopard. Now, you guys saw the movie. You guys know who the leopard is. And I'm talking here to people that probably don't go to church, never read the Bible. You guys know who the leopard is, right? 
you guys saw that actor with the you know with the leopard on his head and you know that the leopard skins on his horse Alexander the Great was the leopard Alexander the Great now these are four kingdoms that rose out of human history that had great influence not only in the past but also in the present that that leopard was Alexander the Great to make things short and I saw in the night vision, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. This one was different than all the other ones, and it was horrible. It was dreadful. It had teeth of, of iron. That's the Roman Empire. Those are the Romans. When Jesus Christ was born, when Jesus, I'm reading out of the book of Matthew uh, this week. When Jesus Christ was born, he was born where? In Nazareth. What? A Roman province. Jesus wasn't born in perfect conditions. He wasn't born at the Holiday Inn. Emperor Nero, I think it was either Nero or Augustus, was the emperor of the world back then when Jesus was born. He wasn't born during perfect times. Neither was I. Neither were you. Neither were your children. There's no perfect government, right? You guys are seeing all these things in Ecuador. No perfect government. Can't trust government. After this I beheld and lo another leopard, and then I saw the fourth beast it was terrible. And it break in pieces, stamped to reduce the of the feet, and it was diverse and all the beasts, and they were before it and had ten horns. Yeah, that beast had ten horns on top of its head. Those are ten different kingdoms that were divided. Of course, they were uh, uh, Alexander the Great divided it into four kingdoms, the, the Ptolemies in Egypt and, the, you know, Europe and the Western civilization that we know about today came out of Alexander the Great. And civilization as a whole, our current day government in Washington came out of where? Out of the Roman Senate. These are kingdoms that had direct, have direct uh, uh, influence over our lives. Kingdoms, four kingdoms that rose out of the ocean. But the important thing, the important thing, let, let me just make it really simple, my friends. The important thing about Daniel 7 is not these animals that are coming out, these beasts. God describes them as beasts, not as men. These animals that rise up out of human history are not the important thing. You have to read on. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Now, that little horn, I hope never to see that guy, that kingdom. It's a small kingdom that's going to rule the world. And it's going to have a mouth, and it's going to have eyes. In other words, it's going to know the world. It's going to know everything about you. It has eyes. It can see everything you do through Google. <laughs> right? Everybody has Google on their phone. Everyone has a tracker on their phone. It has eyes. It sees like God. God sees everything. He's got eyes to control throughout all the earth. That little horn. Now, is that little horn the Pope? Is that Pope Francis? No, it's not. I repeat, that little horn is not Pope Francis. It's not Donald Trump. Because... This horn is going to wear out the saints. It's going to persecute all the church around the world. And you're going to know who that horn is. I don't know who it is yet. The world doesn't know who it is yet. They're not supposed to. Your enemy doesn't want you to know who he is. So he can come at you when you least expect him. And before you know it, he controls your life. He controls your money. He controls where you buy, where you sell through a mark on your wrist. That's already, we already got that technology. But we don't know who that little horn is. It's not the Pope. It's not the Catholic Church. That little, that little horn is, it came out of Rome, Italy. In, you know, Rome. It's not the Pope, you guys. I mean, I don't agree with everything the Pope, I'm not a Papist, I'm a Catholic, but I'm, I don't believe that the Pope is God. And the Pope is not wearing me out. He gets, I still have freedom to, to read the Bible to you on Facebook. That little king, that little horn that comes up talking a lot of garbage is not the Pope. It's not Rome. 
It's not, it's not, you know, the, it's not the Vatican. You saw the movie, right? With, with, uh, angels and demons and all this, you know, with, uh, Tom Hanks. You saw the movie, the books, you read the books, right? That's not, it's got nothing to do with the Pope, man. The Pope is not it. But it's terrible. And if you're going to know people that are on the earth at that time when that kingdom rises and it will rise in our generation, will know that this is the beast and you will either love him and worship him and take his mark. Most of the world will take his mark or you'll have to. I mean, if you are a modern day working man, you got to work, you got to pay the bills, you got to right? We use right now we use credit cards, but during the time of this little horn, you're going to be marked probably a chip on your forehead or some kind of mark on your forehead that's invisible and or in your hand probably not even a chip it's just probably some kind of uh, barcode that they can scan you can scan on a machine and get your money do your shopping right on your car to, to start your car you'll just swipe your car and your car will start nobody else be able to steal your car now, I'm going all over the place with this but that's that little horn is not the Pope guys I see this all over the YouTube Oh no, those are the papists, those are the, they make it so mysteriously. But it's all explained here very clearly. And all you gotta do is ask God, the one who created this book, what does that mean? Which I've been doing, what is that? It's all, what's that all about, Lord? I'm not listening to guys on YouTube to, you know, to this drive to me. Alert, don't even learn it from me. I'm not going, you know, you gotta look all this stuff up for yourself in the scriptures and ask the Lord. That's the point of it. You gotta communicate with the creator who sustains all things by the word of his power. His name is what? Jesus. Jesus. Now, I wanna get to the good part. That's not the good part. That's the nasty part. And behold, the thrones were cast down. Now, I, I read, last time I was here, I read about Revelation 19. All these thrones were cast down. All of the kingdoms of man were cast down. Okay? Cast down. And the ancients of days did sit whose garment was white like snow. That ancient of days is the father. He's the father. The father who of who? My father. Our father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the devil and all his little horns. <laughs> Welcome to all of you. Praise God. I love you. And all you, my new friends on Facebook. My God, I got close to 5,000 friends already. How did I get all those friends? You know, am I looking, you know, day and night for friends? No, they just come. They just come by the will of God. Somebody here wants comes in here to hear the well that's let God's will be done Heavenly Father blessed is your holy name that's what's important about the all the books of the Bible that the name of God is blessed the name of God when you call upon the name of the Lord you are saved what does that mean that means you're made whole praise God you become a real man if you're a transvestite you will become a man if you're a homosexual you'll become a man if you're a lesbo you're going to become a woman a real woman of god praise god now do i hate lesbians no do i hate homosexuals no do i hate sinners no because i'm a sinner too i am a sinful man just like you and everyone else I just got away with it. No, no. <laughs> no, I call upon the name of Jesus and he forgave me of all my sins. I believe that Jesus forgave me of every sin that I have ever committed and will ever commit in the future. Then, well, that, does that mean that I'm going to go around fornicating? No. <laughs> Love you guys. Praise God. Where was I at? I lost my place. And whose throne was like a fiery flame. Now he's talking about God the Father. The one who lit up that mountain in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. Deuteronomy, Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. Exodus 20. I am the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. 
you shall not worship any other God. That's the God that I'm talking about right here. That's the God that this is talking about right there. Okay? The living God. The creator who sustains all things by the word of his power. And who's the word? Jesus is the word. A fiery stream issued came forth from before him. Thousands upon thousands. I'm going to be there. Ministered unto him. And ten thousands upon millions and millions ministered unto the Lord worshiping him. And you see that in Revelation 19. You see the different levels of praise and worship towards God that rise up to him. As God gives them more and more revelation of who he is. Why do you think they're praising him? Just to pass the time? No, they get a revelation from him and they begin to worship him. I get a revelation from him and I just worship the Lord. I worship him. Praise God, Daniel. Daniel, my beautiful cousin, how are you? Praise God. I love you, Daniel. I love all of you. God bless you all. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May, may he bless you, you and your families. And may there be peace in your heart and in your lives. Now, this is the more, most important part of the book of Daniel. Is the revelation of the Ancient of Days. Who is that? Who is? He's the one who spoke in Genesis 1. Hello. Let there be light when he spoke to an earth that had no life in it. Void. Dark. In convulsion. In confusion. He's the one who's in control. That's the important thing about the book. You know, everybody's looking for the devil. Everybody's looking for the Antichrist. Where is he? Who is he? Is he the Pope? Is he Trump? Is he, is he Obama? Who is he? Is he Robert De Niro? Don't look for the devil. Don't look for the devil. You don't need to look for him. Look for Jesus. Praise God. Look unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of your faith. He's the author and finisher of your faith. And there was given him dominion and glory. And a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages. This is the most important part of the book of Daniel. Oh, I love you guys laughing. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. See, you don't have to take things so seriously. I become like a little boy when I'm in the presence of Almighty God. Like a little 13 year old playing in the yard. That's what I become like. Now, I don't become childish. I'm a responsible man. But I become childlike, like Jesus. This day have I begotten you. <laughs> I gave birth to you today, he says in Psalms 2, verse 7. Daniel was grieved in my in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of the head. I, it troubled me. I, I couldn't understand all this. Ocean, four winds, a storm, people, animals coming out of there, horns coming out of the animals. That's not the important part of the book of Daniel. It's not the important part of his dream. That's not what God is communicating to him. He's communicating to Daniel and to all the people of Israel and to us. Christians in modern day who believe in China and everywhere else. In Iraq. Did you see that guy I posted? Got burned four times. They couldn't burn him. And he calls on the name of Jesus in Iraqi. <laughs> Just like Abraham was. Abraham was an Iraqi. Remember I told you Abraham was an Iraqi? From Babylon. Now. These great beasts which are the four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom. Now here's the good news. We the saints. The people who call upon the name of Jesus. You champions. Remember when, whenever that group queen sings we are the champions. Think about the saints of God. God is going to give those kingdoms that little horn, all the four horns, to see everything in it to us. That's the kingdom that's going to prevail. That's the what's important about Daniel seven. I've been look, I looked a little bit. You know, it troubled me. Daniel seven. It just kept coming up. I think it was the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I think it was. It kept coming up. I, why? What does it be? What are those animals? Is that Russia? Is that Trump? 
What is that? Well, now you know, right? That that's not important. That's not important. And the devil likes you, the, your enemy, likes you to put a lot of importance on things that don't matter. Pelosi coming out, storming out of a meeting with the president. Ah, he offended me. Oh, he talked real mean to me. He's your boss for the love of God. He's the boss of the United States. You better listen to him. He's got the hand of God on him. Oh my God, he offended me. Impeach him, impeach him. Get him out, get him out. I think he's going to win in 2020. I hope so. Because when the Trump, when the kingdom of Trump ends, he's the, he's the American, Trump is the American head of gold. When the, he's like a the modern day Nebuchadnezzar. He is, he is, he truly is. He reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, when Trump finishes his eight years in office, thank God for democracy, right? Which God doesn't really, God doesn't condone any kind of human government. He has a kingdom to establish, and I'm part of that kingdom, and so are you, and so will you be. Because it says it right there in the book of Daniel that the entire earth is going to be part of that kingdom. Whether you go to church or not, then I would know the truth of fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, and that's the Roman Empire, with the teeth of iron, and his nails were of brass, that's judgment which devoured, break pieces, and stamp the residue under his feet. Power. That is raw, brute force. That is brute force. You see this today. You see the nations of the world flexing their muscles. You see Donald Trump dressed like a cowboy with his, with his six-shooter. And he's got the world on, under the barrel of a gun. Influenced by the Roman Empire. Rome controlled the world through violence and through raw power. They judged. That means brass is judgment. They were judges on the earth. The Romans were judges. Their Senate were judges of... And guess what? When Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem, in the little town of Bethlehem in the manger, you guys are going to celebrate Christmas soon. He was under Roman rule was he had to go to take a census his parents they had to do a census for, for the Roman Emperor and and this fourth beast which Daniel saw was in control so so we thought during the time of Jesus in fact they're the ones who put him on a cross fulfilling God's will for my life for your life so now it's the cross, praise God. It's the cross that crumbled the Roman Empire in Rome and all around the world. It's the cross. It's the gospel that's going to bring the end of the world. Not that little horn. Not the Pope. Not Trump. Not his atomic gun. God is not going to allow Trump to unleash nuclear hell on the earth. He's not going to allow it. He's not going to allow it. Don't be afraid. Because God is in control. God is not going to allow Putin over there in Russia across the pond to unleash the Satan missile upon us because God is in control. When the time of the day of the Lord comes, it's God who's going to destroy everything, not man. It's God. So it begins with God and it ends with God. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Blessed be his holy name. He is the beginning and the end of my life. When I was born in Manhattan, New York, I didn't know who God is. I didn't know. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't go to church. I didn't, I didn't pay tithes. I didn't know about Bible prophecy. I didn't, know, I didn't even know who I was. I couldn't even wipe my butt, praise God. Mama, got, mama had to put a rag diaper on me to keep me clean. I was born and helpless in a world that's brutal. Brutal. The four winds over the ocean. In a storm. We were born in the middle of a storm, praise God. 1957, Sputnik rushed up 
and that's when that's when I was born. My birthday will be soon. I hope to get those likes and little faces and little memes and everything else. So really the important thing about the book of Daniel is that God is in control. Okay? Hitherto, and let's look at the last verse. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Now this <laughs> look how look how matter of fact God is about it. Now this 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 is it. I'm in control. This is it. And as a Daniel, my conjugations were troubled. He was in trouble. Countenance changed me. But I kept the matter in my heart. And he wrote it down. He wrote down the dream of God. Now I'm going to close my Bible. Because it's very windy here. I'm going to close my, my Bible. Father, I thank you for bringing us together today. Oh my God, you should see this thing blowing all over the place. In the middle of a storm, anytime, anywhere. That's my logo. Father, I praise you, Father, for your wisdom, for your understanding. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. I pray for every single listener here now and in the future. When I'm no longer here, if you hear this, be blessed. Know this, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Now, if this makes you afraid, these things that I'm telling you, if, if you are afraid a little bit, you know, uh, I don't want to listen to this. This is bumming me out. If you're afraid, you need to repent. You need to change your mind. Your augmented mind, the food that they're giving you, the Wi-Fi is killing you, your phone is killing you as a weapon. The phone is a weapon. This thing I got hanging over here looking is a weapon. It's what made to destroy. I'm talking like General Patton again. Man, I was I haven't been here in, a, in about two years, maybe a year, since I've come out and talked with you about Jesus. And the Lord God compelled me, get out of the house and pray. you know it's my day off. Get out of the house, David. What are you doing within the walls? You you got something to share with the world. Yes, I do. I got Jesus to share with you. He's the bread of life. He's the one who will bring peace to you. He's the one who will heal you if you're sick in your mind, if you're sick in your body, if you're twisted in your soul, if you're a witch or a warlock or a Satan worshiper, Jesus loves you. What? I was just at the cemetery yesterday praying to Satan, lighting up candles. What? Jesus loves me? Yes, he does. He loved you enough to die on a cross for you. But it didn't end there. He's alive today. This man, Jesus, he's a man. He is God. 100% God. He's 100% man. We call him Christ. That means that God fills every part of him. He's filled with God. He's the Son of God. The living Son of God. You can talk to him. You can ask him questions. Lord, I don't know you. Jesus, I don't know you. Whatever, you got to talk with him from your heart, my friends. I'm not going to tell you what to say to him. When the Holy Spirit gets on you, you watch this video or, or maybe from somewhere else. You go, you're out there in Puerto Rico and Seba in the middle of town. And there's this preacher just barking through the loud form. Call upon the name and you get convicted. You adulterer, what are you doing with your neighbor's wife? And you get convicted. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's close. The kingdom of heaven is near this kingdom that I spoke about. That's going to overthrow every single kingdom that you know about. And you read about in the paper and see on Facebook. He's going to overthrow them all. Look how beautiful it is here. Man. Look how beautiful it is. I just want to share a little, bit of, a little bit of my paradise with you. Praise God. Thank you for coming here today. Just a little prayer before I leave. Jesus, you are the Lord. Repeat, repeat with me. And then later, if talk with from your heart to him. Jesus, you are the Lord. You are the king of my life. You are the king of everything. I don't know you. I don't go to church. I don't know the Bible, but I want to know you. And I want to be changed. I don't like my life the way it is. Or maybe I'm doing good. Like I was when I came to the Lord. I'm doing good, Lord. I'm doing good, but I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. I want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. 
I don't understand the Bible. I don't want to be religious. I can't stand religion, and neither could I. I can't stand religion. Neither could God. God doesn't care for religion. What? No, God is not religious. He doesn't care for religion. It was the religious people who took him to the cross. Father, I praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus today. And he will deliver you from the little horn. Don't take the mark. When it comes around and they talk about, well, we're going to make things easy for you. We're going to put this thing on your hand. Or you get a choice. You get one, cho one choice. On your hand or your fork. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because once the Antichrist marks you, that little horn, little kingdom, the last kingdom. You, ever, you guys watch that on Netflix, the last kingdom? The last kingdom will be the kingdom of God. <laughs> it will be the kingdom of God. It'll be the kingdom of heaven. Don't take the mark. The little horn is not the Pope. The Pope is not dogging me. He's not persecuting me. He's not the little horn. The Catholic Church is in, in fact, the Catholic Church blessed me, praise God. Thank God for the Catholics out there. And let me tell you something. This is something really weird, right? You guys saw what happened in Ecuador last week, right? I was talk I was thinking about moving over there with my wife. She got a house over there. She got a farm. She got beachfront. She got everything. She's a rich girl over there. But you know, and I was gonna move there to save a little money during my retirement. And I couldn't sleep. I could. I, I couldn't rest. Some. This is before all this happened. This days before this happened. Months. A couple of months before. I, I, I don't know. I just. I don't know. Should I go to Puerto Rico? Should I go here? Should I go to Punta Cana and, and Santo Domingo? Where should I go? I want to retire. I want to stop living like this. I want to find peace. Then. I asked the Lord to make things very clear to me. Just days before the explosion in Ecuador. The political explosion. Just days, hours. At the midnight hour, because I work at night, I asked the Lord, Lord God, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to fall into a trap. And lo and behold, I look. Oh my God, it's a disaster. Over there, it's a, in one day, a so-called democratic government, they call themselves democratic, they use this shield to hide their, and they, they it's a dictatorship. <laughs> they got police, the, the police, is it, they got the Indians, got the police locked up. About 30 cops, soldiers that served the government, men with families locked up, God only knows, they got them, they're treating them like El Chapo. The police, the, 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 the Indians are treating the police like El Chapo Guzman. They got them all locked up in a room somewhere. Oh, they say 83 people disappeared, I think more. They uh, took organs from people in the hospital to sell them on the black market. That You ain't going to see that in the news. Ain't nobody going to tell you about the evil and the wicked. The wickedness that's going on behind all these riots and everything else, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. But the kingdom of God is near. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, I urge you to call on his name today. He died for your sins. And he died, but he didn't just die, he rose again. God woke him up out of death. He walked out of the tomb. He's not there anymore. You can't find his bones anywhere on the earth. No matter how much you watch the History Channel, you can't find the bones of Jesus anywhere on the earth because they're not on the earth. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. And so will you when you call on the name of Jesus. We are headed for eternity, my friends. Everything you see here is temporary. This ain't going to be around for, you know, years from now maybe you know this generation I've always said it this generation is going to see the coming of the Lord generation is 40 years I'm 62 years old that that Democrat uh, uh, congressman 
I pray for his family, of course. You know, he passed away just like that. I mean, one day I was hearing him, I was watching him on TV talking smack about our president. The next thing you know, he dry, he gone. Temporary. Okay? Everything in this world is temporary. I asked the Lord, Lord God, I want a place to live. I want to, I want to find a beautiful place to live on this earth. And he showed me there is no place on this earth for you, David. This earth, the way it is right now, is not your home. You are a guest on this planet. You are a sojourner. You are camping out with me in the wilderness, praise God, until my kingdom comes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver my friends, Lord God, all my friends on Facebook, from the little horn, from the devil, from Satanás. Deliver them, Lord God, from his games and his schemes and his witchcraft and his whatever. Thank you for tuning in with me today. I hope to come go somewhere else sometime and talk about Jesus again with you. Thank you for coming by. It's really good to see all of you. I, I love you all. I, I don't know all of you, you know. It's almost four, almost what? 5,000 friends already, close. We're getting there. And I'm not into numbers, guys. I didn't ask for it, it just happened. You know, people just ask me for friendship on Facebook for whatever reason, I don't know. But I, I appreciate it. I see the hand of God in it, you know, and I don't care if a thousand people watch this or, or three, I don't care. All I care about is that the message goes out to you, you, you saints out there, you men who go to church and read the Bible and know the Lord. I urge you to share the gospel with your friends. Please do it because there's not a lot of time. And am I doing this for some kind of reward from Jesus? Yes, of course I am. I want to have a reward. Of course I do. I want to be redeemed. You don't think I want to be? Of course I want to be redeemed. But I'm not doing it just for a reward. I'm doing it because the love of God is compelling me to share the gospel with you. It's the best thing in the world. It's the best thing that I could share with you. I could come on Facebook Live and make cute faces and do and do caricatures and make you laugh for a little bit. They ain't gonna do nothing for you. They ain't gonna do nothing for you. The fruit that I wanna give you is eternal. I wanna produce eternal fruit. I wanna give birth to babies. I wanted to give birth to spiritual children who cry on the name of Jesus when they grow up, when they come, you know, they're growing up when I was a baby, like Kanye West who's all over the place right now. He don't know what the hell he's doing. But he's a baby Christian. He's excited. And that's what happens when you first come to the Lord. You go, you go into this state of ecstasy. You get very excited. And all of a sudden, everything becomes very clear to you. You begin to see what it's all about. Look at those clouds, my God. Look at those clouds. And let me release the phone so you can see this beautiful scenery here. It's, it's beautiful here. This is uh, Candlewood Lake. They got to see how clean they got it nice and clean. That's what's good about the United States. Everything here in the U.S. is so clean. Well, not everywhere, but here in Connecticut, people keep everything clean and in order. Everything's in an orderly fashion. No disorder. God bless you, and thank you for sharing with me. Bye-bye.